playing live, I think that's probably one of my favorite things to do, like um, next to recording the actual music and like writing the writing process of that. Uh, I, I just like the energy, just like the energy response of like the crowd and just like how like the vibes we create like with certain songs, like how people react and like different places will like get different reactions. And it's, it's kind of nice seeing how people act towards certain songs, like maybe one song I don't, I, I necessarily didn't play as well, but they think like it was like something really like you know good or something, or they like liked that performance of that song, and they liked the way we played it or something. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm usually not put off by my surroundings at all. It's usually it's it's mostly me, like what whatever mental stage that I, that I'm in. I, I mean, we we could play to like four people in a dungeon basement, and it wouldn't really like affect like me playing because I'd probably still play the same. But it just depends on if I'm relaxed or not, or if I'm how focused I am, like what mood I'm in for before I play. Um, when I was in college, I got into a group of um, crowd that was playing music, and uh, they taught me how to play guitar. And the guy that taught me most was a uh, bass player, and he lives near here in Silicon Valley. We started a band called the Coneheads, and we actually made paper mache cone heads, put them on our heads, and made them out of balloons. And um, I got an old lab coat, and we were running around talking all kinds of stupid stuff. It's kind of weird. If we're playing to one person, I feel really nervous. And if we're playing to like you know hundreds of people, I don't feel nervous at all. It's strange. Um, I think it's just because you know if if there's less people, there's a greater connection that you have. Like you know you inherently have to have with them because you're the only you know ten people in the room or whatnot. Um, and that connection is like really important, but uh, it does make me like a little nervous. You know when it, it's because you you're kind of putting like everything on the line and like you're exposing yourself, I guess. You know, um, when there's that few people. But I mean, I love it. It's the, my favorite thing to do. The music scene has changed a lot since the band started. Right before the band started, the music scene was incredibly strong. And there was definitely a scene going on. I mean, really, if you could, I mean, that, it was very strong. And people were very supportive of local music. And there were um, a core set of bands that were really setting the standard for everybody and, and really drawing everybody together. And there were lots of bands, but there was a but there was a greater majority of good bands at the time, or for good for what they did. Um, and just over the years, things just died and got really sort of rotten. Is kind of the only way I could put it. it. Just like sort of decayed over a period of time. And now it's much, much more. Uh, uh, quiet, I guess, is kind of the only way to put it. My role is basically a roadie for the Libertine Circle. Um, I'm very thankful and fortunate that none of them have driver's licenses because I really like doing it. I would like to see more of the, the adult crowd fostering a music scene here. There's definitely a lack of that. Um, I would like to see something better than the, the church halls, the, um, what's that place at Los Gatos High School, the, the venue. Uh, you know, they, they're very nice places. It's really cool that, that uh, they're being set aside for bands to play. I see how, how much um, interaction between the bands, friendships that are made. I feel like everybody's kind of at each other's throats and whatnot, and there's just weird rivalries that have nothing to do with anything really, but um, you know, I think everybody feels like there's only going to be one band that's going to be able to do anything more than just be a local band. So they're all trying to do that rather than, you know, why don't we just make our music scene like more well known and then everybody can benefit from that. You know, why should it be this band and not San Jose? You know? They, if you have the mindset as a promoter, where you go into a show and say, if we just raise the ticket price by one more dollar or two more dollars, that's going to make us, you know, this extra four hundred dollars. You don't think that's affecting people because you think what's a couple extra bucks? You're sort of detached from. I think you really are honestly detached from reality. You're not a show goer anymore. You're in charge of the show. You want it to do well, and you call the shots about the show. Having done shows on my own and having promoted shows and handled every aspect from the band lineup to who's uh, you know, working at the door, 
I know what that's like, and I know that that shouldn't be the case. I know that that doesn't have to be the case. I would have to say bands, really. I mean, it's just more about taking risks. Like, you know, if you don't like something, actually do something to change it rather than just talking about it. Um, and then, you know, if I think fans will come around. If you think, you know, if bands were to think of new or better ways to do shows or to do, you know, CD releases or whatever, you know, that can catch like the fans' attention, then, you know, the, the fans would come back. Really. So I think it, it is mainly the band's responsibilities. Though I understand that it's hard, you know, when there's you know, constraints from promoters and, and whatnot. And... I, I think the fans could be a little bit more receptive. The, uh, you know, a, a, a Saturday night, there's a band playing, a bunch of bands playing. It's five bucks, 10 bucks to get in. You know, there should be better turnout. I don't see much advertisement, even when I'm at, your, at the high school. Uh, you know, I, I should see posters of, um, hey guys, we're playing. I should uh, see, you know, a number of best friends. I mean, there's a pretty big best friend crowd. They, they, they show up at, at our house sometimes to raid our refrigerator. But, you know, that, that crowd should probably uh, make a little bit more effort. I, I think, putting my own narrow viewpoint into this, I think that people have the, the idea that if I don't go tonight, I can always go next time. But if tonight doesn't work, there's not going to be a next time. I really have to hand it to the Red Rock. These guys are, they're brilliant. They have open mic nights, high school students. I get goosebumps watching these kids. You know, they're playing music, they're singing, they're reading their poetry, they're rapping. And uh, that is amazing. You know, from the, from the standpoint of an, of an, God, I'm getting emotional here. From the standpoint of an adult to watch our children, our next generation showing that much creativity, my God. It's fabulous. If you if you love music, you know, you, you should just go to shows. You know, like even if it's like some, even if it's just one band you want to go see. You know, you want to support like the other bands. So you know, it's just, it's, it's something you just gotta do. I don't know. Like, I don't know that's, that's the only way I can really put it. I guess. It could either be really good if people take action, or it's gonna be terrible if they don't. I just need to drown this panic attack. There's really nothing here to see. We sing like jailbirds when we.